Welcome back to Loose Talk. Uh, well, Donald Trump keeps making it extremely hard for senior Republicans to endorse him with his positions on the Orlando Gay Club massacre, um, on the Mexican judge, the so-called Mexican judge, and other issues. And most have either endorsed him very moderately or not at all. One big exception to that is Grover Norquist, who, as the founder of the Americans for Tax Reform, is arguably uh, really the, the founding father of the modern American anti-tax movement. I spoke to Grover in his offices and he explained why he's so strongly and surprisingly in favor of Trump's nomination. Grover, thanks a lot for joining us. Um, sure. Tell us about why you would your thinking behind supporting Donald Trump um, in, in the November election. Sure. I'm going to be supporting the Republican nominee. That has always been my position. And the central part of that is the alternative is Hillary Clinton. And she has already laid out a trillion dollars of tax increases that she's articulated, three significant tax increases that she says total a trillion. Then she has three more tax increases that she won't tell you how big they are. Uh, six kinds of capital gains, and exit tax, in case you get tired of her earlier taxes and want to leave the country, she takes a shot at you on the way out, uh, and a uh, tax on stock exchange. Uh, so everybody will go do their stock trading in London instead of in New York. Uh, so Hillary is a continuation of Obama's failures, which is the lousiest recovery in modern American history, half the rate of growth of Reagan. And so, do you see Trump as a potential Reagan? Well, P Trump is a potential Reagan for the following reason: uh, one, he wasn't Carter. <laughs> it was no more of that, no more of Carter, which was a failed presidency. And on economic issues, Obama's been a failed presidency. If we'd grown at Reagan rates instead of Obama rates, 14 million more Americans would be at work today. That's a big failure on Obama's part. But what our, uh, Trump has done is he's come out for a tax top tax rate of 15% on business income. Right now it's 35 plus the 4 or 5 for state income taxes. So 35 down to 15. That would make America competitive with everybody in Europe and everybody in the world in terms of international trade. It's also 15% on business income for the gig economy, for Uber drivers, for self-employed people, uh, for people in, in partnerships and pass-through corporations. So it's not just General Motors you know, C corporations, it's S corps, it's pass throughs, it's self employed uh, Americans. Huge, an increasing number of Americans so, self employed. So, no, I, I get that argument. I mean, th th there, there is a bet which you've always made on essentially the dynamic scoring yes. of this mm -hmm. that big tax cuts create bigger growth that produces more revenues. But the, the conventional measures of Trump's plan mm -hmm. show a 10 trillion increase okay. to the national debt. Over a decade. Over if a decade. you grow at 4% a year instead of 2% a year in a 10-year period, you have $5 trillion more in revenue. By bring, so by bringing American business and individual tax rates down to the international average, mm -hmm. the European average, but then why isn't Europe growing at that rate? Well, two things. Europe has an average rate of 25%. We're going to 15 Okay, mm -hmm. We're going to be below Europe's corporate rates. Second, uh, while the United States has a stupider tort law, than Europe on ev almost everything else from property rights to government spending to taxation, other kinds of tax. We don't have that. Uh, a lot of our states don't have state income taxes. Uh, we have a much more business friendly pro growth policy in general. Uh, we could always do better, and there's some country in Europe that's doing everything, anything, one thing, better than we are. The Swedes do school choice better than we do. The Swedes do no death tax better than we do. But then they have other challenges which impede. You, you also tend to do big global free trade agreements better than anybody else, and mm. he's pretty much against those. Well, actually, what he said is the following. He thinks that Obama's trade agreements, particularly the one in Asia, where we shot ourselves in the foot and, and damaged our own intellectual property people in the tobacco industry. So you can't have intellectual property in tobacco. Well, that is a lousy road to start walking down. I don't think it's a good idea for tobacco, but they want to do it down the road for tobacco, yeah, liquor, and everything clever, else. And I think it's accurate, but I mean, you're missing a big picture here. He is against, he believes manufacturing is going abroad because of trade, because others are eating our lunch. He's He's also said, quite correctly, the manufacturing's moving overseas because of our tax policy, 
because we have a worldwide tax system instead of territorial tax system, territorial tax system, which is entirely correct. That if you had a 15% rate, there'd be no advantage to uh, leaving offshore. your money overseas or moving offshore. Uh, this is a very important part. The tax part is a very important part of international competitiveness. On trade, he says he wants good trade deals. That's different from Hillary Clinton, whose labor union the supporters want no tax deals. Uh, no, I understand that. Yeah. But he also wants to slap 45% tariffs on America's biggest trading partners. That's a trade war, isn't it? What I he, mean, how does that increase well, we, we actually prosperity? need to be, we, we need to be clearer on what he says than perhaps what he started to say. What he did say is he would threaten China with tariffs if they didn't open up a trade war. Stuff we used to do with Japan, we just didn't yell about it. Uh, look guys, if you can't open up yours, we will raise tariffs on you. And it's not an argument for 45% tariffs, that'd be very bad for the economy, and he's acknowledged that. What you want is lower tariffs across the board and non-tariff barriers. The United States has sometimes been mistreated in some of its trade deals when we get rates down and then discover non-tariff barriers where the Japanese used to come up with 101 reasons why some of our products couldn't get into Japan. Very low tariff, just couldn't get in. So how, as a, as a very much a strict constitutional mm -hmm. conservative, do you feel about building a wall and you know, rounding up 11 million people and the state apparatus and power that would be needed to enforce that? Yeah, one of the advantages of the United States, why we're grow faster than other people, why we're a more dynamic country, why we're the future and China isn't, is one, we're having kids and China forgot to, and two, we can have immigrants and China can't. People can't move to China and learn Chinese. You can't move to China and become Chinese. You can move to the United States from anywhere in the world, and people do every day, and they become Americans. Uh, that is a huge advantage because we can import financial capital in the United States, particularly if we have lower tax rates, and we can import human capital. Uh, with, so that with would seem to be here. very much at odds with the sentiment Trump is running on, what, well, you're, again, what you're describing. The, listen carefully to what he said. He said he wants to build a wall. How is he going to pay for the wall? He says they'll pay for it. Who's they? They is immigrants who pay for H-1 and H-2B visas. This is in his uh, book last fall. So the whole idea of getting... He's also said the government of Mexico. I mean, you're, you're cherry-picking... But his book. The best possible gloss on what he's... Well, the book, the part that's written down. But what okay. about the debates? That, uh, what about the um, when, rallies? What about the interviews? Mm -hmm. What about... The, he's repeatedly said Mexican government will pay for this wall it, it, on okay. the cam campaign trail. That's silly. The Mexican government <laughs> is not going to pay for anything that the okay. Mexican government doesn't want to pay for. But when he actually sat down and wrote a book about his policy... Uh, he has also spoken about and used as a business person. I think to understand Trump, uh, he is new to politics. He's not new to the business world. That's why I tend to trust him on uh, tax issues, corporate and individual. He understands them. He understands the alternative minimum tax, AMT, which is sort of an odd tax in the United States, particularly bad for New England and high tax states. Uh, he gets those because he's lived them. Labor law. He understands it. He's lived it. 